able to position the valve in place and uh, cure the patient's severe aortic stenosis with a transcatheter aortic valve replacement. So we'll turn our attention to the big screen here. So initially, as you saw, we obtained access in the left femoral artery here. Um, when we inject from the other side, you can see the artery filling with contrast, and that's our uh, little needle that's coming in, and we spend um, a considerable amount of time getting just the right position in this artery because this is where the very large sheath or plastic tube is going to go in. So that's the picture of that. And then once we've accessed the artery in the place that we like, we take a picture through, in this case, a small tube that we put in initially as a placeholder. So you can see that the tube is in a good position in a normal appearing part of this artery, not too high, not too low. Um, then we did take a picture of the patient's aortic valve. And you can see here that the valve is heavily calcified and it's not moving. And this is um, a picture taken in the angle that that software program predicted that we'll use later to position the um, uh, artificial heart, heart valve that we're going to place. Um, here are some pictures of the large dilators that we use to dilate the artery before we put in the large tube through which the um, valve will come through. And again, as you saw during the case, we progressively dilate. You can see these dilators going up. They're uh, a little bit larger than the previous dilator. Um, and that allows us to gently make this artery accept that big tube or big sheet that we're going to put in. So again, uh, next, lar uh, next step dilator went in there. And an even larger dilator goes in here. And then finally, after that, you can see the sheath is actually right there. It's going up, and in front of it is the dilator that it's mounted on. And we position this sheath, um, which is uh, going to allow us to deliver the valve through it in the aorta. Here, we're trying to cross the aortic valve, so we use that uh, special catheter, which directs us to the valve, and there we go, we crossed and that's a wire that's in the aortic valve. This is our pacemaker wire. The patient actually has an old pacemaker that's in. You see those leads, and that's the transesophageal echocardiography probe through which we can watch the valve. That's sitting in the patient's esophagus. Here we're doing the balloon valvuloplasty. So this is the valvuloplasty catheter. It's basically a balloon, and we inflate it while we're pacing the patient's heart rapidly so that the heart doesn't kick out the balloon, and we uh, open up that valve a little bit to allow us to put um, the new valve in to make some room for the new valve. And then this is really um, the business end of the procedure. Here you see some very important things. So again, we have a pigtail catheter through which we're injecting contrast to show us the patient's native aortic valve, which is right here, and those are the leaflets of it. And then across that now we have that uh, Edwards transcatheter heart valve that you saw getting crimped on the back table um, and it's mounted on a balloon. The balloon markers are beyond it um, and we're delivering this from the patient's groin through that big sheath that you saw getting put in after dilation coming around the arch of the aorta and into halfway into the left ventricle across the aortic valve. And this is the wire that we're working over and again these are his old pacemaker wires and this is the transesophageal echocardiography probe. These things you see here that look like little wires are the patient's sternal wires. After he had his initial bypass surgery, when they cut through his sternum, this is the way they make the sternum come back together as they put these thick wires through the sternum and then they twist them to hold the sternum together. So that's what you're seeing there. So in this picture, we're trying to position the valve very carefully so it's right um, in the appropriate place so that when we go to inflate it with the balloon that it's mounted on, it ends up in the appropriate position. If it were to go too low, it could end up in the patient's ventricle, the pumping chamber, which would be a very um, disastrous complication. Or if it's too high, it could end up going into the aorta, which is also a very serious complication. So we spend a lot of time here looking at positioning the valve correctly, both by these images that you're seeing as well as via this probe, which is looking at the valve uh, with ultrasound from the patient's esophagus. So again, um, we're still positioning the valve. And then finally, when we're happy with the position of the valve, we pull the pigtail catheter back and we rapidly pace the heart muscle so that 
the heart muscle doesn't shoot out the valve and we inflate the balloon that the valve is mounted on. You can see the outline of the balloon beyond the valve and that in deploys the valve. It lets the valve take its full shape and it locks it into place in the patient's aorta and pushes that old valve off to the side. So if you watch again, that's what's happening. So this is really the final result. Everything we did today revolves around getting this small valve into just the right position in the patient's heart and inflating it perfectly so that it replaces the diseased valve. So one more time, you see we start pacing, we inflate the balloon, it opens up those stent struts and the valve takes its final form and his old disease valve has been pushed off to the side and is really captured against the wall of his aorta uh, in between that and the metal stent struts. When this valve opens up, gets deployed, its leaflets start working. The three leaflets you saw inside it, they begin to open and close. And as you saw at the end of the case, the leaflets were working perfectly, um, as you saw by echocardiography. And then we check by doing an aortogram. We bring the pigtail catheter back down and we inject some dye. It shows us that there's no leakage across this valve, which is very important to show. Uh, and then we uh, put a, another pigtail catheter, which is like this one, across the valve and take that wire out that you saw and we measure the pressure difference across the valve and as you saw there was no pressure gradient at the end which means his aortic stenosis is cured. There's no more difference in pressure in the ventricle compared to the aorta which is what you see when you have a blockage here due to aortic stenosis. And this is the same picture. This is the pigtail catheter here. Pigtail catheter here we're measuring um, showing no pressure gradient. And then at the end of the case, we check the aorta, which is here, and the iliac vessels through which we went to uh, deliver this valve to make sure that we haven't injured them in any way. They look normal, smooth, no irregularities, no evidence of any injury. The big tube that we used to deliver the valve is now down here. You can see it right here. So we've pulled it back in order to check those areas through which we advanced it. Um, and then we take an additional picture of this artery through which that big tube was advanced and it looks totally normal with no injury, uh, which is something that's very important after we put such large catheters and sheaths in to do this procedure.